Hey folks, welcome back. This episode is going to be about staking and what proof of stake is. So we're going to cover how best to set up your wallet to maximize your stake rewards, as well as uh, what proof of stake is and how it works. So let's get into that first. Proof of stake, much like proof of work, is all about verifying transactions and assembling those transactions into blocks and getting those blocks validated into the blockchain. So with proof of work, you have pieces of hardware computing to validate those transactions and those blocks, whereas proof of stake has more to do with the software and the coins. And in order to qualify to be a validator in the proof of stake system, normally you have to have a minimum amount of coins in a given address. That minimum is set up by the tech that backs the blockchain and the coin itself. Uh, but we're going to be using LPC, which is a masternode coin, as an example because it's also a proof of stake coin. So let's get into that and I'll show you how to set it up. So over here, you can see my wallet. Uh, it's got a decent balance in it right now. I just transferred in a little over 3,000 tokens. So we're going to separate that into uh, a number of addresses in order to maximize our staking. I'm not sure exactly what the minimum amount for LPC is, but uh, I figured that 400 coins per address is about the sweet spot. So we're going to create seven addresses. We're going to transfer 400 into each, and we're going to make sure that it's all set up for staking. So follow along, and uh, let's get going. So first off, we're going to set up our staking addresses. So in the receive tab, I like to use labels that make sense and are descriptive. So I normally label all of my staking addresses as staking one, staking two, and so forth. The amount listed here is not uh, necessarily rele relevant. I just add it because that way I know for sure how much I plan on uh, sending in. It doesn't reflect the actual balance of the address. I'm going to request payment and close it. And we're just going to do this for all the rest of the addresses. All right, so we've got our seven addresses set up now, and we're going to go through each one. We're going to select our uh, inputs for transferring coins, and then we're going to send 400 coins to each one of these addresses. So first, uh, what you need to do, now you can't see my toolbar because I'm on Mac and it's not part of the window, but you'll be able to see the menus as I drop down. So first thing, you want to go to your preferences or settings or options in the main menu. Uh, go to the wallet tab here and make sure that this enable coin control features is checked or enabled and click OK. What that does is it allows you to select from which input or address uh, you want to send coins from when you're sending to a given address. So we're going to copy uh, our staking number one address and we're going to go over to the send tab. Now in inputs here, this only shows up, this section here only shows up when you have the coin control features enabled. So I'm going to click inputs, I'm going to drag this window over so you can see it. Now you can see I have this 2800 and then this 207 right here. So I have, uh, the, it, it's kind of split up because I sent over a couple different transactions, but uh, what I'm going to do is select both of them, click OK. I'm going to paste in the address here, and I'm going to send over 400 coins. Now it's going to append a small transaction fee to that, and uh, opening up inputs again, you can see that staking number one now has 400 coins in it and my change jar now has 2600. So we're going to select this amount here, click OK. We're going to go over to staking number two, copy that address, and we're just going to go through the same process for all of our addresses.
All right, so we're done sending all of the coins across to each one of our staking addresses. So you can see our change address here in the inputs. It's still got 207 coins in it. Uh, that's just the remainder uh, from, from our original amount. I'm going to leave that in there. Hopefully it will stake a little bit. Uh, but once these other addresses get some coins in them from staking, I will then transfer those coins into this change address until it gets enough. And then just keep building more staking addresses as I, as I increase the number of coins uh, from staking rewards. So that's pretty much everything. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is when you do select inputs, so if I select this one here, it will tell me right here, just so that as you're entering in addresses and amounts here, you know for sure that I have one address selected and the amount from that address is 207 coins. Now if I had multiple addresses selected, it now shows that there are two addresses and the total amount between those is 607. So that just uh, gives you a bit of a heads up to make sure that you've selected the input so you don't keep opening it to double and triple check your, which addresses you have selected as your from address. So as you can see, our total has not changed. Uh, we have a bunch of transactions now and all of our staking addresses have coins in them. So we're going to wait for these addresses to mature so that staking will become active. You can check that by going into your debug console under tools here. And if you just type in get staking status, it will tell you uh, what the status is for each one of these items here. Mintable coins right now is false because those addresses have not matured yet and all of them have to mature in order for that to become true. And once that's true, staking status will become true. And then we'll see this little arrow light up. And that's when we know that staking is ready. And then we will hopefully start to receive staking rewards. All right, so it looks like our wallet has finished maturing and all the addresses have matured as well. Uh, as you can see over here, it looks as if the icon has turned green. So let's just check the uh, debug console real quick. Type in git staking status and everything's true. So now we can just wait and uh, pretty soon we should start seeing those uh, staking transactions, the, the staking rewards come in uh, over time and they'll hit each address uh, individually. You, it, it's really random, so you might get uh, more on one address than another. Uh, you might get more overall one day versus another day. So uh, if, if you want stability in your rewards, go ahead and get yourself a, a node set up. Uh, you can see that video, I'll link to it at the end. Uh, otherwise, if, if you want to try and maximize your rewards and you're okay taking a little bit of risk in, uh, in not necessarily getting as much as a master node, uh, but overall, the average is likely going to be higher if, if you get those uh, the balances in that sweet spot uh, for staking, which is likely somewhere between four and five hundred coins each. Uh, another point that I would like to make is the the more coins you have in a given address, the higher probability that address is going to be selected for uh, a staking reward. Along with that, the more addresses you have, the higher chance you have per block of getting a staking reward. So setting up as many addresses as you can with as much spread out as you can and kind of balancing that, that'll get you your highest reward. So I hope this was informative and keep an eye out for all of my future videos. Thanks and I'll catch you next time.